Hi everyone, Tim Clapham here for the uh, Maxon YouTube channel and this is the third part of a series of tutorials that um, I've created that cover the exchange features of Cinema 4D um, and After Effects and the first two were looking at taking information from Cinema 4D over to After Effects um, and this final tutorial is going to be looking at the plugin that Maxon um, have released that allows you to take your After Effects information over to Cinema 4D. So there's quite a few times you might want to use this, for instance, if you have a project that you've set up in After Effects and you, you know, you're know, you using After Effects 3D space, you've got 3D layers and you've got um, some lights in there and maybe you've got um, you know, a camera flying through it all and then your client says, oh, it'd be really cool if we could have some 3D elements in there. Now it'd be great if you could actually take that camera that you've already animated and bring it over into Cinema 4D. Well, this plugin allows you to do that, so it's pretty cool. Um, the, another option that you might want to use this for is if you don't have like a fully fledged camera tracker, um, you know, like synthized or PF track, Bougie, one of those. Um, but you might well have something like the camera tracker plugin for After Effects, which allows you to um, create um, a 3D solve on footage. You can then do your solve in After Effects and you can take that tracked camera over to Cinema 4D to do some kind of visual effects work. And that's exactly what I'm going to um do now, well, not exactly some visual effects work, but I'm gonna just going to show you um, a kind of workflow that you can use to work with Camera Tracker, track some footage, um, export this over to after, um, Cinema 4D. In there, we're going to use some um, track points that we've created to add some geometry, use those to catch shadows, um, some fake reflections, those kind of things, render it out, bring it back into After Effects, and recomp it into our shot. Now, if you don't have the Camera Tracker plugin for After Effects, um, you can download a demo from the Foundry website. And if we just jump over to a browser, here we go. And so it's thefoundry.co.uk. And if you come down to products and come over to Camera Tracker, um, there's an option here for a free 15 day trial. Um, I just clicked on the wrong item there. There we go. Um, and you can um, download a fully functioning version for 15 days to give it a try. And it's a, it's a really cool plugin for After Effects um, gives you like opens a whole new world of possibilities of things you can do especially if you don't already have another tracker now I'm actually using the demo for this tutorial because um, I was part of the testing team for this but I use um, synthize and things like that I've got some fully fledged tracking software that I use for most of my tracking anyway but that wouldn't really be relevant for this plugin so I thought as soon as I know the uh, camera tracker and I've used it before it would be a good opportunity to use it for this tutorial so as you can see I've got some footage here which is um, it's just like a street near where I live with some bins and some graffiti on the walls and what I thought we could do is track this um, and then maybe um, add some like um, dynamic objects in cinema 4d that bounce on the road and get caught by the curbs um, and we can you know have them reflecting the walls and that kind of thing so just give you an idea of how we could um, work with this setup of using um, after effects into cinema 4d so let's just select our um, layer I'm going to choose effect the foundry camera tracker and the first thing we really need to do is to track any features and what happens with any um, camera tracker is it will normally track 2D features first of all and it will then um, look at those 2D features and it will uh, look at the um, amount that they move and the parallax between them and from that it should be able to solve that into a 3D camera move. So in the camera tracker window I'm just going to hit track features and you can see that what happens now is we get all these little crosses um, on features throughout our shot um, and the tracking software travels through the shot and looking at these and trying to keep them um, you know to follow that feature if it loses a feature or if it thinks that feature becomes a bit inaccurate um, then what it will do is it will try and seed a new feature um, in, in the same kind of place. So there's always going to be a, a minimum number of features on there at any one time. And you can actually adjust that um, in the tracking um, part of the effect here. And now the way the camera tracker works from the foundry is it will track all the way through forwards and then it will, when it reaches the end, it will come back and it will track um, all of those points backwards as well, just to kind of clarify that the track on them is good. And um, what happens is each track point will then receive um, an error. And the error is like how well it thinks that that track stays attached to that feature and moves around. Um, and really the um, error that you're more interested in is when you actually solve the camera, but you can't do that until you actually have um, a 2D track. 
So we're nearly back to the beginning and you can see that we've got quite a few track points so we should be able to define our road reasonably well and our walls um, but we've also got some track points that might be giving us some kind of incorrect results um, specifically things like this which is uh, right in the middle of the sky up here you know we definitely don't want to be tracking a cloud first of all it's just so far away there's no way that it can give us an accurate result um, and probably that cloud might be moving um, there's a few other elements in here which will probably give us a bad uh, results and that's things like this tree which could very well be blowing in the wind um, so if you have move, moving objects like people walking um, cars or like this example a, a tree then you may well want to either create a mask and mat those out or um, you can select the trackers on those objects and just simply delete them if we look into the effects palette um, where it says display we see tracks we can see track quality and you can see that it then color codes um, our tracks and now these are only 2d tracks at the moment but you can see some of them are green some of them are yellow and they actually go um, through orange to red as well and a green is um, you know a better track and red is you know the, the lowest track um, so what that means is it's the lowest or the highest error track in this track um, in this shot so if you kind of start deleting the red ones then you're going to introduce more red ones because obviously th the ones that were previously the highest error aren't there anymore so a new one becomes the highest error um, let's not worry about the error of these 2d tracks let's just come down and click solve camera now what this is going to do is it's going to take all of these 2d track points and try and um, resolve those due to parallax and less and um, kind of tell us what camera we shot this with um, and the kind of the film back the the lens size um, and you can see it's done that fairly quickly and it's set up a reference frame and this is um, a frame that it's using to set its um, world axis um, and you can see it's also given us an error and the error here is how far um, our 3d point deviates from our 2d track point so it's 0.7 pixels which is pretty low actually um, that's not too bad at all if we now click OK um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to um, create a camera and we can create a camera from this information we can do that just by simply saying create scene and what will happen is it will then take all that information and if we just pull this up so we can see our timeline you can see that now it's added in a camera um, it's also added in a null object and the camera is parented to this null and that's really handy because that means we can like press s for scale and we can scale this up and down or we can move this to different positions and you can see that by default it's set to 640 by 360 which is the center of um, this comp if we switch to um, a custom view you can see there's our camera and if we select that and just hide the footage for a moment you can see there is the sort of path that um, it's calculated our camera traveling let's just come back to the effect and select the effect so we can see all our track points and we've got this set to track quality and you can see point quality okay and you can then see that we've got some red ones um, one of the things that we could possibly do is we could just come through and delete some of these trackers that are up here in the sky for instance and on this tree this might be causing us some errors um, and maybe this tree over here and we've got some far off trackers here as well which and, and very far distant trackers uh, can also um, introduce errors because they're too far away to really read the 3d data accurately you know this the pixels um, are about the size of a branch so we're not going to really get any um, useful information from those trees all the way down there um, so I've deleted a few of those trackers. I reckon that these ones up in the tree up here are just going to cause us problems. Um, over here I'm not sure. It depends whether that bush moves. But really you don't want any trackers that are on moving objects. So you can delete some trackers just like that. And then if you come and just click solve camera it will do. Um, it will resolve that for you. And it will give us a new um, error. And we were at about 0.7. Nearly 0.8 before. Um, and now we're at 0.66. So you can see we have um, managed to reduce the amount of error very very slightly. If you know certain information about the camera, you can come down to the solve um, settings within the effects window and you can set in here the kind of focal length um, and the size of the film back, those kind of things. And they should help the, um, the solver give you a better solution. Um, for this tutorial, I think that 0.6 is, you know, is good enough and um, we can move on and start adding in some other features um, within here so that we can define a ground plane and we can set some nulls and, and things like that where we want our um, walls to be. When you select the effect, you can see all the track points. And there's another thing that you may or may not have noticed. And this is down here in the uh, 
bottom left and this is the camera tracker menu and we can click on here and this pops up um, a whole list of actions that we can use um, with the camera tracker um, there's another way of doing that you can actually hold down command and click within the um, track window and that's probably a quicker way to do it so what we can do is we can say okay I want to just select a few points and we can drag over some points um, such as these uh, on our ground plane and we can then use our right click or command um, click menu and we can then choose ground plane set to selected if we come back to this menu you can see under actions we have this toggle 3d 2d option um, and if we click that and then come down and choose a custom view you can see that now if I just use my uh, camera tool we can rotate around and we can actually see all the points that have been tracked in 3d space and these yellow points um, are the track markers that I just selected and you can see that this is defined the origin of our 3d scene um, at more or less the center of these and it's tried to place all of these onto that ground plane as much as possible so we've already defined a ground plane. Um, what we can do is we can select some more points um, for the walls. If you press tab, you can use that to toggle between the two views. Now the thing is now I'm not actually looking at it through my camera. So we just want to switch back to the active camera. I'm just gonna press V and come up and um, I wanna select some trackers from this kind of garage door. So I'm just going to literally drag over a kind of bunch of them like so maybe this one too and then if we command click we can choose create solid and you can see that what it does is it sort of averages out the um, shape of those uh, nulls and it creates us a solid and if we do a round preview you can see that we've now got a solid 3d layer in our comp that more or less matches that garage door now if you were spending a bit more time working on this you could probably get a slightly more accurate solve you may want to add more trackers when you track it um, so you've got more features so maybe you've got a, a little bit more to choose from on there but for what we want to do this is going to be absolutely fine um, we can do the same on the other side and um, you don't need to drag over some you can just say click a few um, that define a kind of space and I just want some that are all along this fence and again I'm just going to click and choose create solid and now I have another solid on this side and you can see um, that's working pretty well and when we export this to Cinema 4D these will come through as geometry in Cinema 4D and we can use those um, for reference for either aligning our um, geometry or we can um, actually just use them directly within our scene as well as defining our ground plane adding in these uh, 3D solids we can also generate null objects um, and they'd be pretty handy for uh, this curb because what I intend to do is kind of spew out a bunch of particles that are going to land on the road and then roll and it'd be nice if they stopped where the actual curb is so um, we can simply just come in and kind of shift click to select a whole bunch of these just like so I'm not even going to be too accurate about whether they are exactly on the curb or not you know this will be enough to kind of create a more or less convincing effect if this was a real job obviously you'd spend a lot more time um, making this as accurate as possible so I've selected a bunch of these um, track points I'm just going to uh, command click and choose create multiple null objects and you can see there we go it's created all these null objects for us now there's one thing to bear in mind between um, the After Effects to Cinema 4D transfer and that is where the axis position of objects are placed all of these um, Null objects have their anchor point up here in the top left of the um, layer. Whereas in Cinema 4D, what will happen is the axis will be placed in the center. So that's something you need to bear in mind. Otherwise, what might happen is when you export this over to Cinema 4D, you'll realize that your track points aren't matching up with your footage anymore. So to fix that, we can simply select one of these. And if we just press Shift Command Y, you can see that by default, the uh, null is created at 100 by 100 so a quick way to fix this is to simply select all of them press a for anchor and if we just set this to be 50 50 you can see now that the axis is indeed in the center of each one and they are quite big at 100 um, units each so that means that our overall scene is quite small now if you wanted to uh, make sure that you were accurate with scale then what you could do is come down to the um, parent null that you have here 
and you can simply scale that because if you notice that all of these nulls that have been created and the camera are all parented to this one null object that means we can move this around we can scale this and everything else will stay in the uh, correct place to be honest for this example I'm not too worried about that um, it just means that my objects in Cinema 4D might be a little bit big and it won't be to scale um, but one thing I do want to do is just select this null and press P for position and I just want to zero this out so that this is kind of in the um, center of the world as it were so when I bring this into my Cinema 4D scene, this null object will correspond to world zero in my scene too. So I think we've probably got enough information here. We've got all of these nulls, we've got our solids, and we have our ground plane defined. We should be able to use that um, within Cinema 4D to create some proxy geometry, um, camera map this footage on there, and then use that to create some um, reflections, catch some shadows, render it out, and bring it back in. So um, the next thing that we need to do is come up to the file menu, and we need to export Cinema 4D exporter. Now, if you don't see that in there, then what that probably means is you haven't installed the plugin. If that's the case and you don't see the export option within the um, file export menu, then you need to quit After Effects and find the uh, plugin and install it. And there's a couple of places you can look for that. The first thing to do is to um, go to your uh, Finder or Windows Explorer and go into your Applications folder and find your Cinema 4D folder. In there, there's a folder called Exchange Plugins. If we go into there, you can see After Effects, and then we have Importer and Exporter. So go Exporter, and then find the appropriate plugin. Unzip that, and place that into your After Effects Plugins folder. So here you can see I'm working with CS 5.5. Here's the application folder, Plugins, and in here you can see I have the C4D Exporter plugin. Um, if you... Uh, don't necessarily have the right version for your version of After Effects, then you can also um, get this online. So you can come to maxon.net, come to downloads, um, and then what you do is you come to updates and plugins. And if you come here, you can see that we have the plugins for After Effects, and here are many different versions for different versions of Cinema 4D and um, After Effects. So just make sure you download the correct version for your version of After Effects and Cinema 4D and place that into your After Effects plugins folder. You also need to make sure that there's only one version of that plugin installed, otherwise it will not work correctly. So once you've done that, you can restart After Effects. You should be able to come to the um, file menu, choose Export Cinema 4D Exporter. This will then pop up a dialog box where you need to choose a location to save the file. And then you just click Save, and you should be able to move over to Cinema 4D.